Okay, we're going to go ahead and continue on with this. I believe our mic is working now. So yeah, we're good. So I, I apologize for that. We had a, a minor hiccup. Um, so what I want to do, as I stated, I wanted to pause just for a moment and think about what has occurred. We do know that Jesus has went to the Garden of Gethsemane uh, to pray, right? And this is east of Jerusalem. And as I stated, what is so important us, as us as believers even, right, is that we go to our secret prayer closet, that we go to a secret place to pray to God, to, to ask God, to, uh, to, to deliver us, to bring comfort to us, right? Oftentimes, it's not about us asking for God, say, give me this or give me that. Oftentimes, it's just like, God, you are a great God, and you've been there through thick and thin. You've been there with me from the time that I was born until this moment right now that I need you the most. And you know all of my concerns and you know all the things going on in my life today. So I ask, Lord, that you uh, just continue to bless me and keep me because he is already aware, the scripture says, he's already aware of those things that you desire in life even before you ask of them. So Christ goes here not only to pray, but to speak, to have this conversation. Lord, is there any other way? Yeah. Is there yet one more way, right, that I, that I could redeem mankind without having to go through this physical punishment? Maybe if I had more time, God, maybe give me more time. Maybe we could at, at a certain time really call upon those 10,000 angels to begin my reign now here on earth. Is there another way? Can the world be redeemed? Can you believe in me? Can the world receive me? Begin to trust in me? Can I begin to reign now, God? Must I give my life in this way to redeem all mankind? These are, this is what's on his mind. This is what's pressing upon his soul, upon his spirit. And when doing so, can we alternate a different way? Is there another way, Lord? Can you bless me, right? And bless these people without me having to endure the cross. Verse 32, sit ye here while I pray. Right? God has been so good to his disciples, to mankind, for over three years of his ministry. All I ask of you during times of my own weakness is that you pray for me, right? Jesus is asking. He is seeking their reassurance. Can you believe in me? Call upon me, the same Father. I ask, do you believe in me, right? Do you believe in my name for your sake, right? Before I give you the three points, these are four things that I want us to focus on in this passage of Scripture, right? What we find in the text is that God wants us to call upon him in the weakest moments of our lives. That's number one. Number two, if you have compassion for God, if you have trust in him, call upon the Lord because through the Lord you will find comfort and you will reassure God's love he has for you through him if you call upon him. Christ is telling us, uh, in this third point, Christ is telling us, right, in this passage of Scripture that, that we should sit still and pray, that if we pray, God will find another way, right? May not be your way, but it will be God's way. And with that, we begin to trust in Him. And then also, number four, if anything we should take from the words of Christ is that He is attentive to all of our needs, right? And with that, He will send the Comforter to sit with us during times of doubt. Let's begin to unpack this, right? And three points that I want to hit on today, right? Point number one is to watch carefully. Point number two is to stay alert and pray against spiritual attacks. And point number three is the comforter. And I'm going to come back over each one of those points. Point number one, watch carefully. In that Mark 14, 32 through 42, right? And it says, and they came to a place which was Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit ye here while I pray. And he take it with them, Peter and James and John, and began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. Meaning, while they were in church for the past two and a half hours, right, that they had a good meal, as I stated before, that they sung music, that they read the Psalms, Jesus washes their feet, he preaches two and three sermons, right? And then he is betrayed by Judas as well. A lot has transpired. They go for a short walk to the Garden of Gethsemane, and their eyes are heavy, is what has been told to us in verse 33, and they fall asleep like many of us do in church, right? Verse 34, and saith unto them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch, right? 
And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. Doesn't that sound familiar? Sounds like something Mary said, right? And he cometh and findeth them sleeping and saith unto Peter, Simon, sleepeth thou? Meaning, are you asleep? Right? You could not watch for just one hour? Watch ye and pray, lest you enter into temptation. This is the second time Jesus comes to them. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. 39, and again, he went away and prayed and spake the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. They had a good meal. This is Passover, right? There's, there's, there's several you know, several segments of this meal, right? The bitter herbs, the, the drinking of the wine, and, you know, you're having meat and things like this, bread. They are, they are full, right? And he cometh the third time and said to them, sleep on now. And this is God being a comforter to us. And we're going to unpack all three of these. Rise up and let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. Hmm. So that verse 33, and he taketh with him Peter and James and John and began to be sore amazed and to be very Heavy. Now remember, right, in Scripture, right, there was this event called Mount Transfiguration where he takes Peter, James, and John, I believe Andrew as well, and they go up to a high mountain, and there Jesus Christ is transformed. He is transfigured in their very sight. But they are asleep then as well, and they only catch a glimpse. They only catch the last few seconds of this particular event at Mount Transfiguration. Jesus Christ, uh, along with Elijah and Moses, are having this conversation, right? Jesus' clothes are, it says, whiter and in white is pretty much what the scripture states. A white that we cannot even understand, nor have we ever seen. A brightness is what is described by the gospel writer. Hmm. Christ is accompanied by his faithful three. And during the most important, most attentive points of his life, right? He calls upon them to once again not witness a healing, not witness a teaching, but to exercise their faith in what is known about him and unknown, right? He wants them to uh, be aware once again about the invisible and the visible, that he is a spirit, that he is sent from the heavens, right? The heavens built not by hands of man, but by the hands of God. Peter, James, and John would go on to be Jesus' faithful witnesses, ambassadors of the Christian faith, and, and that is why he relies on them so very, very much. But, but as I stated, they are heavy, right? They are tired of church. We have seen Jesus go away and pray over and over again, and they are fatigued. Hmm. How many times have we been in that particular position? But glory be to God. It is nothing but the Holy Ghost, which allows you to wake up each and every day to go to church, right? Even if you only hear one good thing, maybe it's one song that touches your spirit. Maybe it's the deacon praying. Maybe it's the scripture that is being read. Maybe it's a sermon that is being taught, right? But you say, man, I'm glad I went to church because I gained something. I learned something from that particular event. So without the faith of Peter, right? man would not fully understand what the love of God represents. If you have done studies on Peter, he has not been the one that you would want on your right-hand side on many occasions. He speaks his mind very quickly. Uh, he doesn't really, uh, you know, he embellishes things. He doesn't think through what he is about to say. Hmm. God will forgive. And that's what we find with Peter, that, that, that in this passage of scripture that we just read, he comes to Peter first and says, why are you asleep? But I thought maybe you could stay awake for just one hour, right? You are my faithful servant. Hmm. Without these guys, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, we wouldn't be able to understand the significance of walking away from the things that we loved, right? These two brothers, right? They, they, they left their boats, their business, and their father mending their nets. Jesus said, follow me, and they dropped their nets, and they followed Jesus. This is all about being faithful to God and doing the will of God. Verse 34, right? My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, sorrowful unto death. Now, now, once again, we're finally, finally hearing Jesus having some concerns. These are 
uh, physical concerns, not so much spiritual concerns, but physical concerns coming from the physical, right? That I am sorrowful, meaning I am feeling uh, uh, anxious, right? I, I, I have some anxieties about going through this, what I am about to do. So please tarry here and watch, right? How many times have we told one another, right, through social media, or we picked up the phone and called another person, right, or a friend and said, hey, please pray for me, right? How many times have we just said, hey, I'm going to pray for you right now, right, before we get off this call? Go ahead and do that prayer right then, right? Don't say, I'll, oh, yeah, I'll keep you in prayer because you may forget to pray. And just because your thoughts were on it doesn't mean that your heart was in it. Hmm. So there is something we should try to understand about watching. Why was it important for disciples to watch, right? I'm, I am about to show you something, right? Not just me sitting there praying, but you might have also witnessed a multitude, several angels coming to provide comfort to me. Though they are powerless to stop what is to come to pass, it was important for the disciples to see and, and to witness and to, to understand what kingdom purpose was all about. That the sacrifice of Jesus is meant to transform the world. Not only that, that it, it is possible that these men would see, as I stated, something from glory coming down and comforting Jesus Christ, just as they, as they did at transformation, transfiguration. Excuse me. Verse 35, and he went forward a little and fell on his ground. Many, uh, many theologians are stating he is anxious. He is fainted. He is faint-hearted. He, this is heavy. This is a heavy burden that he's about to, uh, that he's about to go through. If anyone lived during the times of the first century church, they would be used to walking in and around Jerusalem or around Golgotha, right, and seeing crucified people or hearing uh, individuals being whipped in the squares, right, whipped into death, all right? So this is a very, very difficult time, and to witness someone being crucified and staying on the cross until they died, sometimes a few hours, sometimes several days, this is something that they're used to and did not want or even think that their heavenly father, that Jesus, their master, would have to go through. The posture of Jesus is a demonstration of physical distress. It says he fell. I mean, he is like, he just loses strength. It's, it, it's almost like when you, you see someone at the end of a race or a, a, a physical event, right? And they, they just don't have any strength left and they just lose their footing. This is Jesus. I have the weight of the entire planet, the universe, from now until eternity on my shoulders. So his posture is one of like, oh, I am weak and I need the comfort of my faithful disciples to encourage me along the way. We need to encourage one another is what we should learn from this. This is church business. This is a church event that has transpired. That as I needed your prayers, you were not there to pray for me, to provide comfort for me. Hmm. His spirit is willing, but his flesh is weak, just as those of his disciples who are unwilling to stay awake. Jesus also is willing, but in doubt of the process of attaining God's vain purpose to save mankind, right? Through his death and resurrection. To trust that through the pain and sacrifice, that a brighter day is to follow through his resurrection. That we find peace. Many of you, think about the peace that you are that you're under right now. Yeah, there's some things going on in your life right now. There's some things that you need to take care of, relationships, finances, right? Uh, uh, parental issues, right? Job issues, whatever's going on, right? But do know that God has all those things under control and he doesn't want you to sit still. He wants to be proactive of what you're doing so he may bless you, right? And that's what Jesus is doing. This, that scripture says that he went forward a little, meaning that, that, that he didn't go backwards. He didn't say, I'm not going to do this. I am not even going to pray. I'm going to fall asleep with my disciples, right? Lord, God, Abba, Father, please let this cup pass over me. I am not going through this. No, he goes forward, even in his physical distress. He is willing, but in doubt of the process of this purpose. Point number one, watch carefully. Throughout Jesus' ministry, he has taught and preached about being aware of unleavened bread, right? That there would come a day when the Pharisees and the Sadducees and, and hey, people we work with, right, would attack your faith and your purpose in life. 
Beware of those that will doubt your faith and will try to destroy you based on your love for me. They will make fun of you. They will ridicule you. Oh, why are you reading the Bible? Why are you praying? Why are you going to church on this cold day? Why why are you a church official? Why do you sing in the choir? Why are you preaching? Why are you a deacon? Why are you a parking lot attendant at the church? People will make fun of you. But this is kingdom business. And he's telling them to watch carefully because they're going to come and attack you because of your love for me. Matthew, the 23rd chapter, speaks candidly about what the Pharisees should be attentive to, right? Verse 4, for they bind heavy burdens. And I won't go through all the seven woes, but here are a few. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to the to to those who are born and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one finger. So whatever issues that's going on in your life today, right? These Pharisees and Sadducees said, oh, that's your problem. (laughs) They would not lift one finger to help you, to pray for you or anything, right? I am holier than now. I am from the tribe of Levi. You handle your own situation. Oh, you're a widow? Let's talk about your land. Are you sure you can handle the land? Are you sure, right? Jesus talked about how these individuals would come and take widows' land and property away from them when the husband or the sons had all died. That first five, but, but all their works they do to be seen by men. They want to be seen by men. They, they make broad their, their robes, right? The scripture says they're phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and they love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues. They want to sit in Moses' seat. It's an actual seat. They want to sit in the high places to be seen and be heard by men. This is a powerful position. I have to be seen. That verse 13, right? But woe unto you, scribes and you Pharisees. And Jesus calls them hypocrites. For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. They're not even encouraging individuals to even seek heaven. It's all about themselves. I follow all the hundreds of laws of Moses. You don't follow any of the laws. So I will go to heaven quicker than you. I will go to heaven and you will go to hell. That's why Jesus is calling them hypocrites because they judge other people wrongfully. Verse 23, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought you have done and not leave the other undone. Why haven't you given grace and mercy and care to those who are needed the most, but you focus more on the offerings that people come and bring to the church? Hmm. You buy you blind guys which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Hmm. This is what he's telling the disciples at this point to be alert and stay aware, uh, be alert and stay alert of. Point number two, stay alert, pray against spiritual attacks, right? Classic, classic example, David, when he was on the run from King Saul, departs and into the desert of Judah, and he comes to hide in the cave of Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard of it, they went down with him. And everyone that was in distress and everyone that was in debt and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto David and he became captain over them. Almost like a modern day Robin Hood type scenario, right? Taken from the rich and given to the poor. You have King Saul coming to destroy you. Right? But because of the heart of David, a man after God's own heart, we do know that individuals who are distressed, who owe debts, right? who, could, who should be in bonds, right? they come to David for, for care, for comfort, protection. Let's take a look at Psalm 57 to see what Christ is trying to tell his disciples during times of distress. And this is a Psalm of David. Be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me, for my soul trusts in thee. Yea, in the shadow of of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities overpass. Hmm. I will cry unto God, most high unto God, that performeth all things for me. Once again, he's not asking specifically for things. He's saying, but I will just trust. I will cry out to God in the most high God, right? 
that performs all things, right? My very being. Verse three, he shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that was following me up, which is the devil. God shall send forth his what? His mercy and his truth. My soul is among lions and I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. David is under attack from individuals who want to, who want to physically attack him, right? And those who are physically attacking him with their words and their actions. Be thou exalted, exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. Once again, when we pray, we exalt God. Don't ask him for this, this, and this. He already knows what your needs are before you even ask, the scripture says. Remember, because he said in the Lord's Prayer, he says, remember, um, you know, they said, Lord, how shall we pray? He said, remember, your heavenly father knows what you're going to ask before you even ask, but this is how you should pray. Our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens and let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps, meaning that they're going to trap me. My soul is bowed down. They have dug a pit before me into the midst whereof they are fallen themselves, right? My heart is fixed, O oh God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praises, even though they're trying to kill me. What Jesus wants us to do, right? Never take our eyes off of him is what he's asking Peter, James, and John to do. Despite the challenges that beset us, despite those around us trying to destroy us, we should focus on him and know that he is the comforter and the protector of us. So while we sleep, while Christ is speaking to us, let's do our best to remain attentive to him, to remain in constant prayer and attention to him. Point number three, the comforter. In the Bible, right, the, the, the word uh, paraclete comes from the Greek term parakletos, which means one who is called alongside or one who intercedes on our behalf. In the Gospel of John, Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as the paraclete, right, emphasizing the Spirit's role as a helper, advocate, and comforter for his followers after he departs from the world. As I digress, the Holy Ghost is a person. It is it is Father, Son, Holy Ghost. It is a person, right? And it is something that we should pray to, that we should embrace, that we should uh, communicate with on, at all times. Holy Ghost, please help me. Holy Spirit, help me through this situation. Holy Spirit, protect me. Holy Spirit, bring, bring comfort to me in this situation. The paraclete is a vital part of the Christian faith, right? The Holy Ghost. As the Holy Ghost continues to guide and teach and support believers throughout their spiritual journey. John 14, 16 and 17. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. Book of Acts speaks specifically about the Holy Ghost falling upon all flesh, upon all men. He dwells in you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. What we've talked about are these three events, right? When Jesus comes to them, as I close, the first thing he says, point number one, is watch carefully as I go to pray. I, 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 need, your, I, I need your friendship, right? I, I, I know your faith is lacking, but, but I need your prayers. I need your attention because I can't do this on my own. I'm, I'm going to do this on my own, but it would be nice to see you there with me. Amen. Watch carefully, please, and pray with me. Point number two was to stay alert and pray against these spiritual attacks. 
And this is real life today. These three events are real life events. If we think about Bible application, point number one, watch carefully. Meaning Jesus is telling us in 2024, hey, watch carefully. Watch the weather events. Watch the wars and rumors of wars. Watch men who have become lovers of themselves instead of lovers of God, right? Watch all these things. Watch carefully. Be in prayer. Watch carefully. Point number two, stay late. Pray against spiritual attack. Meaning, while you're watching, don't lose faith. Stay straight, right? Don't digress. Don't, don't go to the left or to the right, but remain straight. Have blinders on, right? And main fo re remain focused on the truth. Stay alert because what's going to happen is spiritual attacks will occur. He's coming to destroy you. He is coming to kill, steal, and destroy. That is his purpose. Anything that looks like God, anything that was created by God, Satan is coming to attack and destroy. Stay alert, right? Wake up, wake up, wake up. Stay alert. Please be with me. Stay alert, right? Unless fear comes upon you. Unless lack of faith comes upon you. This is 2024. He's telling us back then, 2,000 years ago, about these three things. Point number three, the comforter, right? So despite everything, because, because I told you to stay alert and pray with me, you've done that. Glory be to God. And then you tried to stay awake because I told you that, that, that you would be under spiritual attack. And now you're praying with me and you're, you're praying to me that, that the devil will flee each time he hears my name. And you've done that. So now because of that, Acts the second chapter, I am sending the comforter. I am sending the Holy Ghost to be with you. So that is the context of the New Testament scripture. That even though you fell asleep, I am not angry with you. Now it is time for you to wake up because evil has come at our doorstep and it is the hour that I must be betrayed. But I will be with you. Even during the time that they're judging me from, from Pilate to Herod and Herod to Pilate and back and forth and they are beating me and blindfolding me and kicking me and spitting on me and false witnesses are against me. Do know that I am bringing comfort to you. I know when the cock, when the cock uh, uh, goes three times. Right? I, I, I know it thrice, right? Peter, I'm aware of all these things because I am God in the flesh and I'm doing this for you. So everyone, watch carefully in 2024. Stay alert, pray against spiritual attacks that are coming upon you, the doubt, the lack of faith. Continue to stay in prayer. Always pray. Pray without ceasing. Pray in supplication, meaning pray all the time. And the comforter, he has given us a perfect gift. He's actually placed a piece of himself within our DNA, within our soul, and it is the Holy Ghost which is there to provide for us, to protect us and bring comfort to us during times of darkness. So watch carefully. Stay alert, pray against spiritual attacks, and do know that he has sent the comforter to protect us. Sorry about the interruption, everyone. In conclusion, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory, with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. May God watch over you, bless you, and keep you throughout this week, keep you safe. May he bless your family. May he bless your health. May he bless you, the roof over your head, bless your finances, bless your community, bless everything there is about you, your health, right? May God bless you and keep you. Dear God, thank you for allowing your presence to be felt today. Thank you for the Holy Ghost which showed up today. And we were under attack as well, Lord Jesus, by, by the devil. Thank you for straightening that out for us today, Lord Jesus. And in all things, we will continue to give you praise, honor, and glory. And it is in the matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.